at the mention of your name. Something happened, for it's not just a name. Greetings and a warm welcome, rather a fiery welcome, to this International Online Sunday service. So grateful that you can be a part of this great gathering this morning. Now, we, we weren't sure if we were going to survive a week to be able to be here in the presence of God to receive that tonnage that is beyond our capacity to receive, but we continue to pray for the ability to understand from the Holy Spirit because what we are getting into is more than what we could ever imagine, ever conceive, but we pray that we are able to get more than the 10% that the prophet said we must get. If you remember, he said, if you get 10%, it's a miracle. We pray for that miracle to happen, but greater than that, we want all of it. So let's continue to pray. And let's prepare ourselves for what the Lord has for us today. I'm Pastor Kuramba, joined by Pastor Chikuni. And in a few moments, we will be introducing the prophet of God, man of God, Zafnath Panir, National Solutions. A subject that I, that really touched my heart, touched my spirit. I. I've heard people talk about dreams. I've heard people describe how a father functions in the life of a son. Last week's message was just something else. Yes. I probably needed more time to digest that. Mm -hmm. But I thank God for this moment Mm -hmm. that we are about to get more. And I really, really believe that it is a time that we should be praying so that we can receive from God. Because I know for a reason, for a fact, that God is speaking to us. Yes. And we, we need more time um, to continue to digest that message. The prophet said we're on a ladder and we should see the development of this idea by God. Do you know, when we try to analyze how many steps this ladder had from last week, we counted a minimum of 83 <laughs> steps on this ladder. But mm. um, today we, we're going to be delved into deeper depths, but... This is it for the season. We must engross ourselves in what 
the Lord wants us to receive now and Indeed. become frighteningly awesome people. You know what? I what really wouldn't that? want to say much, but to encourage somebody out there to prepare. Yes. Position yourself right. Yes. Ensure there's no disturbance. Yes. Look for that one individual or two individuals that you really need mm. to ensure that they get to hear this message. Mm. Please share. Yes. Talk to somebody. Yes. And prepare yourself. Pray up. Because God is about to speak to us. God is about mm. to speak to us. Let's get into it today. Let's get into it. Passage 20. Let's get into it. I want to introduce um, the voice of God. He's with us now. Father, we we thank you for your presence here today. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you once again. Father, if we were to take every single language known to man that wasn't, that will ever be, we were to gather them together in one place and convert them into an expression of gratitude, those words would fall disgracefully short of the gratitude we carry in our hearts. Father, if there was a way to empty ourselves in expression of thankfulness, we would go all the way. Mm. We thank you, Father. Father, there are many things that we are grateful for, for the message you gave us last week. But Father, one of the chief amongst them is that you allowed us to hear things that no man has heard. Father, you did that so that we may become people that have never been seen, a certain breed of beings that has never been seen on the face of this earth. Father, we don't want to disappoint. We don't want to fall short of this glorious call because it is, we feel the call to rise to this future. And so, Father, we, we ask that you lead us on you walk us through slowly, Father, slowly, <laughs> slowly. We don't know if we can handle another one like last week's Sunday, but slowly, Father, yeah. show us the way. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, pastors. Again, I would like to thank our uh, Oreo Broadcasting crew for making this uh, broadcast uh, possible. And... Um, Again, uh, thank God for the viewership that we have this morning. Uh, it's a good thing coming here, knowing that uh, you have somebody out there watching and listening. It's a good thing just knowing that. And uh, I'm grateful to God for the family that we have and the joy and the excitement that you you see during our broadcasts and I'm, I'm thankful. Thank you because you keep on communicating, you keep on giving us very encouraging feedback and for that again, thank you. Yes, um, last Sunday, we did what we did, but um, as a teacher of the word, there are things that you realize every time after completing a presentation that this was good. And you must be able also to uh, notice and acknowledge the mistakes that you would have made. Um, I realized that a message of that nature wasn't supposed to take that long. 
uh, it's, it's not encouraged because like we have said before, a human being can only take so much in a given period of time. And the only advantage that our viewers have is that they then have access to these materials even after we are done broadcasting live. But not many really um, will consider revisiting those messages after they are broadcast live, which is something that we should teach ourselves to do. Because you are losing out on so many things. On so many things. According to God, it's not fair that we have to come back again today and continue from where we left. It's not fair. It's not fair. If we are just to do the revision, just the revision would go on again for the next three hours. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So it's quite a lot that we touched on. But anyway, it is good that we have listeners that are prayed up. And I trust that God will uh, make available understanding that is required for this kind of information. Uh, we touched on so many things <laughs> last Sunday. Yes, I, like I said, that was just the foundation. And uh, I'm even hesitant right now to delve into the matters that matter. Because it is important that we fully understand the foundation before we get to this structure. But anyway, we have to proceed. We have to go on. But if there is any area that I touched on last Sunday that you pastors feel because you look at the response, like uh, how people were responding last time before we had that uh, glitch, uh, messages that were coming in and comments that were coming in, you are representing thousands of people that are part of this uh, uh, session. There are areas that seem to stand out the most that require elaboration, explanation, clarity, and so on. When we get to such places, uh, it is your responsibility to bring me back at any point so that we don't move along uh, alone. We want to have company. We have, want to make sure that no one is left behind. So don't feel bad because this is the reason why I enjoy having you here. Um, some don't fully understand. Some that have never sat where you're sitting right now may not understand <laughs> <laughs> what it feels like and uh, what needs to be done when you're here. You may know what to say as long as you are not here. But the moment you sit, it's a, it's, a different, it's a different situation. But I like the way that you are helping us flow. I, I really enjoy your presence and I really want to thank you so much for the great work that you've been doing throughout this uh, phase that nations are going through. And uh, so, um, if there's any area that you'd want me to elaborate, touch on again before we get into something new and uh, and then uh, uh, we'll get into what I have for you today yes thank you, thank you Father for the opportunity to ask Father a lot of the questions that have been coming through and a hunger that people want to understand is to do with the example that you gave us of a rope and a pulley you what? At the rope example, the rope. Father. Okay. Yes, Father. Uh -huh. Where uh -huh. behind you, you have your past. Yes. In front of you, you have your future, and you are in the middle. Mm. 
And Father, we acknowledge that we have tentacles that are reaching into the past, mm -hmm. attached to bad experiences, sure. bad emotions there. We've made careless, careless soul investments mm -hmm. into the past. Mm -hmm. we, we fully acknowledge that and we know that. The hunger now, Father, is please help us to understand once more, Father, how it is that we can transport those experiences from the past to the present and be able to make sizable investments from our soul into the future that we desire. Please explain that process to us, Father, once again. Mm. We really want to grasp it because a lot of the comments that were coming through, people were saying, this is, finally, this is the key. Mm. Mm. It is. This is the key it for is. me to, to be who I must be mm. and to get out of where, where I am right now. Mm. So, Father, please help us to understand that, that process. Mm. It is important that people take seriously their involvement of a mentor who guides you uh, through uh, spiritual terrains. You know, people have mentors who are assisting them in as far as businesses are concerned, yes, in as far as sport is concerned, so many things. Yes, in politics, people do have their mentors. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking specifically concerning this particular area, the spirit world. Yes. There you must, it's, it is a must that you get somebody who is adequately equipped by the Most High God to coach you and to bring you into the place of understanding where you can begin to perceive uh, supernatural activities uh, from a clearer perspective. So if you happen to have such a person in your life, prove that the person is qualified to mentor you spiritually. Is his ability to awaken you, to help you become conscious, mm. even when you are in a state of unconsciousness. Mm. Wow. wow. Being in an unconscious state mm -hmm. and yet you remain conscious. Uh, maybe that's... Okay. I, 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 I'm getting into something. Please, please, please. You see, please help us to understand that. There is something that happens when you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. Each time you go to bed mm -hmm. and you sleep, you get into a state of unconsciousness. Mm -hmm. You are no longer aware of your immediate environment physically. Yes. But as soon as, as you get into that unconscious state, mm -hmm. you are coming out of a state of consciousness mm -hmm. into a place of unconsciousness and yet that place of unconsciousness is another consciousness. Mm. <laughs> you have left the dimension that you fully can understand physically. Mm. 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 And you have gotten into another dimension mm. that you cannot understand. Yes. But you must understand it is the migration of the two of you. Mm. The place that you have left that you no longer can understand it is because the person who understands that dimension has been left out of this dimension that you've just visited. Wow. So it is a state of unconsciousness to the man that is not part of that dimension that you have left in the conscious mm. realm. Mm. Yes, Father. Let me, let me put it this way. You are in a dream state. And what you're seeing happening there some of it when you wake up it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. by sense i'm referring to the physical sense that you have 
And the reason why it doesn't make sense to the physical senses is because the physical senses were not really involved yes, mm -hmm. in that uh, spiritual manifestation. Yes, so that's the, that's the reason why we end up saying I was in a state of unconsciousness. Why? Because this conscious mind that you have was not actively involved mm -hmm. in that act, mm -hmm. in that dream, mm -hmm. in that drama. Mm -hmm. But while you were unconscious physically, you were conscious spiritually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is why I'm saying that state of unconsciousness is a state of consciousness mm -hmm. yes, to another person, yes, to a certain part of you. Why we're starting from there is because um, um, you have raised an issue where we have to understand um, and know how to invest, especially in into our future. Yes, mm. that's a very um, sophisticated technology that. Uh, God uh, made available in his kingdom. Mm. God never wanted you to be a first timer in the future. Mm. 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 He, he doesn't want you to be a stranger. He doesn't want you to be mm. a newcomer. He doesn't want you to be a novice. God never wanted you mm. to find yourself in a place where you have never been before. He wants you to be part of the future that you, you have been to. Mm. He wants you to visit a place that you've once visited. The dream world is that technology. Mm. You must be given by your mentor an understanding so that while you are dreaming, you maintain a certain level of consciousness, knowing what is happening. Mm. Even during a dream, have you ever had a dream where you knew that you were dreaming? Yes, sir. Mm. You are dreaming and you, you, you know that this is a dream. Mm. Yes, sir. Mm. That's the consciousness that I'm talking about. Yes, sir. If Solomon had not received that consciousness from his father, You would have asked for a palace. You would have asked for more horses. You would have asked for a bigger army. But he asked for understanding. Mm -hmm. Something that he agreed with when he came back to the physical conscious state. He still needed that thing. He did not regret ever asking for understanding. Mm. That contradiction, it happens several times. If it was any of our people in that dream, they would have asked for money. Mm. 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 And then you regret waking up realizing that you have a disease that is killing you. Mm. Mm. And you begin to beat yourself up and you say, I should have asked for something much more important mm. than what I asked for. Yes, for so I'm talking about that unity of purpose, that agreement between you, the spirit, and you, the flesh. Where you have something that you have asked for in a spiritual state, you agree with it when you come back into the physical state. Mm -hmm. And you say, I like what I asked for. Mm 
in a dream. It was understanding that he wanted physically and it was understanding that he asked for mm. in a spiritual state. There was no contradiction. Okay? So most people given that opportunity to ask God for anything, they would have asked for something completely wrong. Something that they would regret after asking. Okay. So the only way you can ask something that you can agree with when you are back from that dream is when there is a maintenance of consciousness. Knowing what is important while you are here and still knowing what is important while you are there. Okay. Wow. Please, my father, please. please. <sighs> Can you elaborate on that? <laughs> please. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> please. Because I'm, I'm, why I'm saying so is the fact that it may seem as if it's a simple process mm -hmm. of aligning your consciousness to your subconsciousness. Let, let's call it subconsciousness. Mm -hmm. Where you are not conscious and you are aware of what is happening in the dream and you can bring the other part of you into activity within that dream. Mm -hmm. I think, my father, that's something that is... It seems so simple, but I think it's very technical because looking it at is. it from a realistic point of perspective mm -hmm. or from a non-spiritual angle, mm -hmm. it can't happen. So please, my father, Okay, let's, let's combine both questions that you have raised. Mm. Remember what I said concerning the dream that you've had in the past mm -hmm. or in experience, mm -hmm. which was not even a dream, it was a physical experience. Yes. yes. Where you had somebody that you loved drowning in the river. And an emotion, which is an expression of your soul, mm -hmm. was activated mm -hmm. at that spot, mm -hmm. at the river bank. Mm -hmm. Notice I said whether it was physical mm -hmm. or you dreamt. These two scenarios are in no no way different. Mm. These two scenarios. Mm. Whether mm. it was physical, where you had your brother drowning mm. and you were afraid, mm. or it was in a dream mm. Mm. at the river mm. Mm. and you watched as your brother uh -huh. drowned. drowned. Uh -huh. mm. Still, the same response of your emotion, of your soul, mm, yes. mm, happened. Mm, mm. So a deposit is confirmed. Mm. It happened. Mm. It took place. There is a specific location, whether it was in a dream. Mm. A spiritual man should be able to come to you physically and take you to the place because the place is in existence. Mm. Mm. And he says, you came here in a dream and you discharged an emotion called fear into this atmosphere. Ah. You came here in a dream and this is what you saw happening. In as much as that was a dream, but your soul, like I said, cannot tell the difference mm. between what is happening in the dream or what is happening exactly in the dream or, or, or physically. Mm. That discharge happened and you contaminated that atmosphere that you were in, whether physically or in a dream. Mm. Okay? Mm. Now, then after that, you went on with your life as if nothing happened. But there was a piece of your soul that was now missing in terms of records. Mm. You left it in the past. Mm. Now, 
I came here and I was saying, that part of you that you have left is the part that keeps on inviting the other part. Because understand, I said, there is a, your soul is like, like, like a tree which has branches. Okay. If it was fear that was activated, whether you are dreaming from 50 years and in a dream you go back when you were 11 and you see something happening and then you are afraid. Maybe it's because when you were 11, you had an experience which was physical or you had a dream mm -hmm. which was in the present. So that in incident is around 11 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you matured mm. into becoming a 50-year-old man. Mm -hmm. But there is a, you have a nest which has got some eggs. Mm. Mm. Okay? Mm. Right? Yes, ma'am. And then that emotion called fear that manifested when you were 11 mm. will remain attached to the present emotion called fear that you have at 50. So when the fear is summoning your emotions, it's not all of your emotions that will be drawn back to that time there's only the emotion that was activated at 11. Mm. So it is your fear that is drawn back to that place mm. because something came out of that emotion called fear into that place. Uh -huh. And that line remains visible in the spirit. Where you have fear at 11 and you still have fear at 50 because it's part of your emotion the fear mm. yes so the fear in you relates very well with the fear that manifested at 11 mm. so when that incident is drawing you back it doesn't draw all of your soul mm. Mm. it draws the fear aspect yeah. of you okay yes, now then I said For you now not to be affected by what happened when you were 11 or when you were 7, you then have to mature in your present state that you become bigger. Mm -hmm. And I gave an example of the Earth's magnetic field, that the Earth has its own magnetics. Mm -hmm. yes. And because we are dealing with the Earth, it is a bigger thing. Mm -hmm. And when you have your compass, within the compass, there is a magnet. Mm -hmm. It's a smaller vision. Mm -hmm. yes. Right? Yes, mm -hmm. Of the bigger vision. Mm -hmm. yes. That's right. And when you place your compass on the table, it is controlled by the bigger magnet of the earth. It is given direction by the bigger magnet. Okay. Yes. This is not fiction. Mm -hmm. This is what we see happening. In, in real life, yes. real terms, right? Yes. So you see the bigger guy controlling the smaller guy. So you can't have your compass controlling the earth, mm. giving the earth direction. Mm. Mm. It doesn't mm. happen like that. No. Yes. It is the bigger magnet, magnet. that controls the smaller oh, magnet. Yes. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yes. yes. So I'm saying you must remain the bigger guy. Mm. If in your present state, you are smaller than your deposit in the past, then you have a bigger emotion in your past, mm -hmm. determining your present direction. You are drawn into the past by a deposit which you deposited at a young age and then after that 
You did not get born again. You did not know the Lord. You did not mature spiritually. So the issue now is because you have, you have two dimensions. Imagine when you were young, though you had the uh, sinful nature, but in terms of committing sins, your sins were very few by then. Mm. Hmm? Yes. 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 That's right. You had not yet started stealing, mm. destroying, mm. Uh, killing people. Yes. You were still young. Mm. So there is a measure of holiness that you had at that time, which makes you more powerful at that time. And then when you were growing up and committing more sins, you were becoming weaker and weaker than you were before. So imagine now you have a man who is now 50 year old, but who is weaker than an 11 year old boy. And what the 11 year old boy did is so powerful that it can control a 50 year old man who is not born again. Mm. Mm. Uh, okay. <laughs> what is making this young man more powerful is his less exposure to sinful acts. Mm. At that point, like a baby that is born today, yes, there is a sinful nature within that baby, but there's the presence of angels around that boy. Wow, 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 wow. You have the presence of God in that house when you have a new baby. Until the baby begins to get into some crazy things, right? Yes, sir. And the amount of that presence of God begins to deteriorate and it begins to go down. Mm. So when you think that you are maturing physically, you are actually going down spiritually. Mm. There's a level of maturity mm. that you are losing as you are growing mm. physically. Mm. Yeah, this powerful. is why now what happened when you were young becomes a permanent fixture. That's powerful, Father. That That's can drag the man who is in his 50s mm. back to infancy. Mm. And you can have some of the men that are grown ups, that are mature, but they still speak like children. Mm. 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 <laughs> mm. You still decide like a little boy. Hey. There's no maturity in the choices that you make. You are being influenced, being controlled by the bigger magnet because you have remained the smaller magnet. You should have been born again, study the word, develop yourself, become bigger than your previous experiences mm. so that you're no longer controlled by any uh, uh, former deposit that you'd have done into that atmosphere. So, ah. we, worse, worse off if you continue dreaming about that past again while you still are 50. Okay. It's a further deposit, it's a further investment mm, mm. into the past mm. again. You're st strengthening that establishment. Exactly. Mm. Okay. You are building one, it's mm. a brick upon another brick. Okay. okay. Until your house now is completed, but it's in the past. You're building a, a, a structure, a, a, a house, but it's not in the future. So it's not in any house that you'll have to find in the future. You will have to lose your job, go back to the village, and then you stay in that house. Mm. You laid the foundation while you were young. Now you're going back again at 50, depositing the same amount of fear into that structure, mm. making it a permanent structure mm. now when it gets to the point where now it is completed it is now roofed it's now a formidable force mm. you can't resist it. Mm. now it's inviting you to come and stay in that house because you build it with your emotion called fear same thing happens while you are here now in the present you are talking about investing into the future you have to understand that the only access, the license that you have currently, the permission that you have to visit the future is a dream or vision or an idea, a thought. How do I invest into the future 
you have then to travel into the future as a soul and see something that stimulates your emotion mm. called happiness. Mm. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Mm. You must do a tour. Walk around that property in the future long enough until your emotion releases a radiation mm. called happiness mm. into that space mm. in the future. Mm. That place might be a place which is yet to be uh, allocated to people for stands, but you can get to that place before time and make a deposit, not to the council, but you can release that energy into that place. And you know that your place is secured. Now, when you come back into the present, you know that you have lost something into the future. There is something that you have transferred into your future account. Mm. Now, make that one bigger. Mm. Make that one bigger. Mm. Okay. Yes, mm. Because while you are there in the future, you are a bigger entity, a more mature person. Because we move from glory to glory, mm. from faith mm. to faith. Mm. So when you see yourself in the future, it's a bigger version of you because of glory to glory migration. So what you deposit in the future, it's a bigger version of you that is depositing into the future. Mm. Which means the smaller version of you in the present will be affected by the bigger magnet that is now in the future. I don't know if you're, if you're following this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So while you are dreaming, make sure that you understand it's a season, it's a moment of depositing uh, energy into the future. So God is saying, I don't want you to find yourself in the future and it's your first time there. You must have visited that place. Okay? You must have attained, you must have procured that place mm. spiritually. Mm. By being happy around that area. Mm. So when you wake up, you know that you have something much bigger in your future and something much weaker in your past. Why? Because now you are born again. Mm. Okay. So once you are born again, you can no longer be affected by what happened when you were young because that righteousness is not according to God. It's according to age. Oh. But the righteousness that you now have in the present, oh, it's an inheritance. It's an imputed righteousness placed upon you by God. Mm. And that mm. makes you bigger than your past. Mm. That is, if you are born again, that's the best way you can escape your past. You have to be born again. And the moment you are born again, you are bigger than your previous experiences. Mm. Mm. So that your previous experiences can no longer drag you back. Mm. Mm. You are heading towards the future. Yes. Now, so I'm sure in my present, I'm no longer going back to the past. The best I can do is to bring my past into the present and re-modify my previous dream. Okay. Because I told you, while you were young, you were dreaming of a certain shoe and you wanted to buy that shoe growing up. Until now, you have grown up, they are no longer producing that shoe. What are you going to do? A car that you used to love growing up, mm. you said, I'll buy this one. They are no longer producing that one. So when is that dream going to, to be fulfilled? Mm. This is why I'm saying, as your soul is developing, your dream world has to develop and your experiences have to be upgraded. Uh -huh. So you must be able to bring back that vehicle mm -hmm. into the present and have it upgraded. Okay? Oh, 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So because you are, you have now been made bigger and stronger by conversion by new birth. Mm. So I bring my experiences into the present. Whether it was a fearful experience, I can deal with it now because I'm now strong. Mm. Okay? Mm. And I can post it into the future. So what has happened is weaker. What is ahead of me is strong. So I now have to be careful since I'm born again. I'm moving from faith to faith. So if I'm going to see something happening to me in the next 10 years, it's a better version of me. Yes. It's an improved version of me. Yes. We're seeing that. So I must pile up, put everything that I I I have according to the capacity of my soul into that space. So that when I come back into the present I'm weaker than my future investment mm. because I'm moving from mm. glory mm. to glory. There's mm. a greater glory in the future mm. that is pulling me towards itself. I don't know if 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 if, if, if what I'm saying is really sinking. It is. It's sinking. So far. you there is a way of knowing that this dream is in the past or it is in the future. Okay. Now for me to explain this part i have to quickly get into maybe the definition of the name given to joseph by pharaoh the zephnath pania okay and then i can explain to you um why we had to dwell so much on dreams mm. visions and experiences that are that are supernatural now zephnath pania means treasury of the glorious rest mm. or the treasures of the glorious rest mm. <laughs> or it means abundance of life the abundance of life mm. Zephnath Pinea or Zephnath Pinea or Zephnath Pinea means the treasury of the glorious rest there is treasure that is so glorious and that kind of glory ensures rest mm. Mm. another definition of that name means the one who cares either for the weak who cares either for the poor the one who fights to get life for those who doesn't have it mm. somebody who fights mm. like who goes to war someone who has an ability to stop the enemy before he gets through the the gates in, in, into the city mm. somebody who stops the enemy before he gets to the gate yes. mm. that person is is up na pania there are people women children in the city who are weak they cannot defend themselves and the one who can who makes sure that they will live for the next 100 years because he has managed to stop the enemy that person carries that anointing mm. okay of the sabbath panier yeah. anointing anointing wow one who has an ability to look at you and see that you are not able to protect yourself and to feed yourself 
and then he sacrifices himself for your sake. Hmm. But back to this first uh, definition, the treasury of the glorious rest. Mm -hmm. It means there is treasure which is in a certain state that is mysterious to people. Hence, we are talking about dreams. Yes, sir. There is a state, there is a place, there is a location which is so glorious and in that location, there is treasure. How do you access that dimension if you are not a master in dreams and visions? How do you access that? Because already we are being told there is treasure. Mm. But the treasure is in a glorious state. How do you get to that place, that glorious state? Something glorious must first happen to you. So I know exactly what I'm doing when I'm pushing this idea of dreams into this subject. That's the only way I can get you to visit that glorious place and be able to extract treasure, mm. riches from there. Mm. And I'm giving you this because that's something that I've tried. There could be something else that you can do, but I haven't tried that as yet. I'm giving you something that I've tried and I've seen it work. Mm. You are poor because of poor places that you are frequenting. When you tap into this dimension, this glorious dimension, you cannot remain poor. Mm. And I'll tell you what you need to do now. When you understand these things that I'm teaching you about, uh, I receive power. You know the reason why we are uh, sidetracked and we are not considered serious by the so-called educated. Why the world does not recognize the presence of the church as a uh, solution provider. It is because of the nature of the solutions that we carry. The solutions that the church has are in a form that is confusing to the physical world. Yet we have solutions, but they are in spirit form. Mm, mm, mm. And if a solution is in a spirit format, the world is good at ignoring those because they don't understand how the spirit and the physical can coexist. They don't understand. They want something that they can test in the lab and gives them results. But the moment you tell them that I have a solution but you can't quantify it, then they have a problem. The moment you begin to tell them that you can have 6,000 demons in one person, one location, mm. and that's confusing to them. Yet I will try my best to explain to you how spiritual solutions can help us come out of our physical dilemma. Spiritual solutions are the real solutions mm. to physical problems. Mm. Mm. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Oh, the deliverance that happened in Egypt was as a result of someone having visited 
a glorious place of rest. <laughs> the interpretation dimension is a realm where treasures are being kept. And that realm is so glorious, so glorious that you certainly realize rest when you visit that place. Finally, you rest. <laughs> mm. Now, let me attempt to touch on the first layers, few bricks that we have to put upon the foundation. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And then... Uh, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't want to start something that I cannot finish today. Mm. What do I do here? Read that scripture again, Genesis 41. Genesis 41, verse 45. Verse 45. See what is happening now. I'm now trying to bring this into the practicality, something that you can start implementing now. Thank those you of you that are listening to me, okay? Yes. So we are not just focusing on national uh, problems um, in terms of nations as we know them. Hmm. You as a nation. Yes. God said, behold, in your womb, there are two nations. So individuals listening to me are nations. Hmm. Okay? You are a nation. Hmm. You are a nation. Hmm. Follow this. You are a nation. I have a lot of things to explain from there. Hafaz, I think maybe we need to be bringing back these, these teachings, not just to wait for Sundays, because there's quite a lot that I need to share. Wow. <laughs> this thing wow. I can tell you, I'm never going to finish it. There's a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Imagine you. we are still at the foundation. Yes. Okay. But I want our people now, our viewers, to listen to this. What is happening after Joseph was named Zapnath Bani? Mm. Uh huh. From verse 45. Mm. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name zaphnath Paniah, mm. and he gave him to wife Aseneth, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. He went out over all the land of Egypt. Egypt. Mm. Soon after Number one, interpreting the dream. Mm. Number two, the position was given to him by mm. Pharaoh. Mm. Number three, a name was given to him. Yes. Number four, a wife was given to him. Mm. You must be able to notice how many things were given to him. Only as a result of interpreting a mystery. <laughs> he got a position in the society. And the qualification was only one on the CV, the ability to interpret mm. mysteries. And he got a political position on that basis. Mm. Not what he got from Oxford, the ability to solve mysteries in mm. a supernatural way. Mm. He got himself a position. Now, I'll elaborate on that later. And he got a name. Oh. And then he got a wife. Esnath. Mm. Mm. Esnath. Now, when you look at uh, things like that, you'll understand that uh, Esnath means belonging to a goddess. Belonging to a goddess called Nath. Mm. Okay? That's fine. That's the meaning of Esnath. Mm -hmm. Belonging to a goddess called Nath. Mm -hmm. And that god was a goddess. Mm -hmm of handicraft. I want people to hear this part because it's very important. Handicraft. 
the working of hands, manual work. <sighs> there is a reason why Zapnath Paniya had to be given such a wife. It is a marriage, not just of two individuals. It's a marriage between the supernatural <laughs> and the physical. Where the man who has an ability to perceive and to comprehend and to articulate mysteries mm has now to be given something that is so tangible, something that is practical. Mm. So, Esnat is the materialization of the supernatural, mm. which is the interpretation of dreams. So, what is being brought together here so that we can have solutions in Egypt? This is a concussion. Mm. Mm. This is a synergy. Mm. This is a bringing together of the supernatural and the physical. So that you can have the materialization, the manifestation of the supernatural in a physical format. Mm. You need a handiwork, a handicraft. A wife that converts the supernatural into the physical. Because it is not going to help physical Egyptians to have solutions that remain in the spiritual dimension. Mm. There must be a conversion. Mm. How do we bring the supernatural from a spiritual dimension into an industrial dimension mm. where you can work out the supernatural with your hands? <laughs> This is where most of you Zavnat Paniyas that are listening to me, you have lost it. You did not marry a wife that was according to your supernatural status. You married according to children. You married according to gender. You married according to wanting to multiply physically. You married according to physical satisfaction. You needed a place where you would deposit physical seeds. You wanted somebody that you could sleep with. And you got that one. Mm. So the marriage was according to a certain part of your body. The marriage between you and your wife is a marriage between her and a certain organ that you carry. But this marriage is a union of two things. The power to interpret dreams. <laughs> Getting married to something that can bring that power to its physical manifestation. Okay, you are blessed if some of you are listening to me and you are not yet married. You must marry according to your vision, marry according to your dream, marry according to your future ideas. Oh, I think I need to explain this. Please, please do. Please, please do. Please dig deep please into do. this one, fam. My, 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 my. Oh. They were never going to realize solutions in Egypt had Joseph remained alone with no physical person in the house who is able to cause the supernatural to materialize. Mm, mm. Because what we now have is a combination of two things. Joseph the supernatural with Esnat, the handicraft, 
you now have the working of the supernatural in a physical state. Mm, mm. Those of you that are listening to me, I want to state this point loud and clear. If you are that guy that has the Zabnat Paniya anointing, you must be careful now who you marry. Because you must marry according to your supernatural positioning. Can I say something here, Pastor? Yes, Father. Drop it, Father. What are you going to do if you realize that you are in the state that you are in today? Because that is what you've qualified yourself for, given the person that you've married. Some of you, you married according to your past. Some of you, you married according to your present. You did not marry according to your future. You did not consult the emotion deposited in the future. This is why you can't seem to be going further because the present esnat that you have in your life is not compatible with your future deposit. She has no life there. So if she wants to live long enough, she has to keep you in your present state because there is no provision for her in the future. Do you know I'm about to drop something. I know it when it's coming. Do you know that <laughs> if depending with your career, maybe you are going to become an engineer. You are still studying today. Maybe you are going to become a pilot and you are still studying today. Maybe you are going to become a heart surgeon yet you're still studying today. Now, that heart surgeon is already in existence. When you thought about it, when you dreamt about it, it was the future that you visited. Yeah. And you made a deposit into that sector. So there is a place for you in the future health sector where you are made a participant based on your deposit into the future. So follow me now. Follow me. Maybe you want to be a man of God. Maybe you want to be a prophet. Do you know, do you know that if you were never meant, hear this, hear this, hear this. I know I will, I will trigger a lot of controversy Listen around this me. area. Listen, Father. Do you know that if, even if you were not made to be a prophet, even if the prophetic was never your destiny, and then you make a mistake of marrying the prophet's wife, that marriage will make you a prophet. Mm. Mm. If you were never meant to be a politician, it's not your destiny. And then you make a mistake of marrying the wife of a politician. Mm. that union will result in you becoming a politician. I'm saying a mistake. And some people may wonder, how is it possible that you can marry 
a prophet's wife yet when you when i married her she wasn't she wasn't married a prophet's wife doesn't become a prophet's wife after she's married to a prophet it's a design mm. 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 it's a program in a person So you can mistakenly marry a pastor's wife and you are not born again. And that can make you a man of God, not a calling. Not a calling, not not a calling. Hear me, hear me on this one. I, I'm proving to you the power that a woman in your life has in restructuring your destiny nah you are, you are, you are, you are not you are not you are not, you are not here you are not here <laughs> i'm saying if you were never meant to be a prophet and then mistakenly you marry the prophet's wife and you are not that prophet there is energy in that woman that will drag you into that destiny there is a program ha hmm. oh <sighs> and vice versa is also true if you are a prophet <laughs> and you marry the wife of a truck driver or the wife of a politician you being a prophet you may find yourself in a wrong destination though you were born a prophet because you need to have a prophet's wife is a prophet for you to become a prophet mm. how can this be father <laughs> i gave an example last time of uh, the best football players that we know that you can have a guy who knows how to do all sorts of things in the pitch i've watched men who can lift the ball from the corner and it caves like a banana right into the nets mm. Mm. i'm astounded by that that amazes me it may not well be something spectacular to other people but it's because i've 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 once tried it that's why i'm amazed <laughs> some of these things that doesn't amaze you you have to try you have yes. to just try it and then and then you change your understanding True. Sure. how can you somebody can pick the ball from the center and then he gets to the gate navigating through that opposition and opponents are coming after him and then he manages still to get to the to the gate mm. that's an amazing personality mm. but after exhibiting all those stunts you don't want to come back home and you realize that your wife was not even watching then you know that you have married another person's wife because mm. you look back you look at the numbers in the stadium that we're celebrating you doing all of those tactics mm. and among us those thousands there are many women that are not married mm. that desire your profession so all those women are wives of football players yet they are not married i don't know if you're following this we're following we're following and then you come back home the person that you got was never according to that destiny Mm. She doesn't find pleasure in what you do. Ah. 
Hey, hey. Then your energy ah. is destroyed. You are no longer encouraged. You are a prophet. And then for the first time, you find yourself in a dimension that you cannot even understand and then you move into secrets. You reveal mysteries in one of the services and you touch on very complex matters. Mm. Mm. You yourself, you are wondering, how did I know? Mm. Mm. How did I bring out this information? Mm. Mm. You have mm. never mm. done it before. Mm. Pastors hear this. After doing that, you have to understand that's why we have to pray. Because some of us, we married according to the future, not according to our present. Mm. <laughs> you don't want to finish such a service and then you get into your car and then she's asking you something completely different. Then you have a problem. You have a problem. You have a problem. You have a problem. What do you do? After such a demonstration of the supernatural, if your wife is not an esnat, what do you do? When she begins to talk to you about another uniform that you need to buy for, your grade five uh, son. Mm. I think we need some more uniforms. Mm. Mm. Uh, I, have a, I, have, I have a meeting tomorrow. Mm. What is that? Then you realize because you are, you are, you are in a state of shock. You have never seen yourself do what you've just done. And mm. then she has never seen you do that as well. Mm. At that moment when you are driving home, if you are driving, if you are in a bus sitting next to the person that you love the most, and she doesn't look at you and ask you, ah, should I call you my husband? Or what? I'm amazed. How did you do that? How is that even possible? How did you get to know all that? If nothing like that happens and you're a prophet, then you know that you have married another man's wife. You have a wrong person in your life. Don't ask me, so what, what, what should I do? Don't ask me that question. I'm just telling you that you made a serious mistake. When she doesn't believe in you, when she thinks that maybe you got that information from somewhere, you will realize that in the future, there is a resentment that will begin to build among us, the two of you. There is a wall that will begin to be erected between the two of you. You will be shocked in the future that your prophetic grace will manifest more when she's absent. I'm not saying after divorce. Mm. No? You get to places when she's not present your spirit is at liberty to manifest because you don't have the presence of somebody who is undermining it mm. 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 and suspecting that you are playing tricks. Mm. So sometimes all that you might need to flow and to manifest fully is the absence of such a person in your life. Mm. Mm. Is the person in your life agreeing with the future success? That person can become the limiting factor. She can hold you in the present. 
because that's where she finds joy in the present. Any slight movement into the future, she will have to fight it because she has never been to that same place. Hmm. Then you begin to have some problems. I can prove this to you through scriptures, the book of Peter. First Peter 3. Verse 1, I've dealt with this before when I was teaching you concerning the way of the Spirit. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Likewise, ye, ye wives, mm -hmm. be in subjection to your own husbands. Your own husbands. Be in subjection to your own husbands, you wives, yes? That, so if, that, and this is the reason why you have to subject yourselves to your own husbands. That is... If any obey not if the word. If any of those husbands obey not the what? Word. The word. Uh -huh. They also may. They also. May without the word. May without the word. Be, be one. one. Yes. By the conversation of the wives. You see that? Yes, sir. It's a scripture and it's not in the Old Testament. Peter is saying, if a wife is able to submit well to the husband, mm. if that husband is going to disobey the word, he is going to be won mm. by the conversation of the wife, hey. the uprightness of the wife, the conduct of the wife, the lifestyle of the wife. You thought the word of God was the most powerful force on the earth. Mm. Read this. Here Peter is saying, if the husband is to disobey the word that you thought was the ultimate, mm. there is a possibility that a husband can disobey the word, mm. but he cannot escape the grip produced by the integrity of the wife. To think that God has his word and then after the failure of the word to convict the husband, here comes the woman. Ay. The woman, the wife is coming after oh. the word that after God has tried the word and it has failed, everything that the man of God was teaching the husband is not following. Everything written in the Bible, the husband is not following. After the Bible, God is placing a woman and he's saying, in case he disobeys the word, if the word fails to produce a convert, here comes a wife is hired to do what the word would have failed to do. Ah. Can you imagine? I'm talking about somebody that you have in your life that can create chaos. You can become the best husband in the world if the wife that you have is the wife of the best husband. Mm. Oh. <laughs> How much time does she spend talking to you about your achievement? If you are a doctor, You've just finished opening up a patient and mm. body parts were scattered all over the table and you managed to put the man back together and now he's breathing and you're taking those pictures back home and you put them on the table and then your wife doesn't dare to pick them up. She doesn't celebrate that victory. You're in trouble. I feel for you. You're in trouble. What gives you joy? If it doesn't give her joy, you've lost it. You have married another man's wife. You may think she is passive. She's not encouraging. No. She has enough encouragement for the right husband. You got another man's wife. You're wondering, how come she doesn't recognize, she doesn't look at what I'm doing? No, 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 no. If, it, if you were the right husband, she was going to be looking. Mm.
you have to marry an Esnat. Something, something in here that helps your supernatural abilities to manifest. <laughs> I'm already solving solutions. Yes, sir. National solutions. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, it's not all about money. I'm telling you the problems that you are in right now and how those problems can be solved. You are in trouble. <sighs> there is no way that you would have known what you liked was what you had. That was what was present. You married according to your present limitations. <laughs> Yet you're heading towards a future that has unique preferences. You may say, so should I divorce this wife? No. She has to be upgraded according to the future. Mm. She must be flexible enough to be conformed according to the oncoming future. Mm. When you go for counseling, some of you, you make mistakes. You think counseling is just so that you avoid divorce. That's not the ultimate purpose for counseling. Counseling is for self-development. Mm. Counseling must be for improvement. Mm. Not only to avoid divorce, but to avoid irrelevance. Mm. You are upgraded. You have to look at your wife and see that my wife is way beyond and above me. How do I follow so that we can work together so that at any dimension, she still has me as the husband. This is why you have to take this issue seriously. 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 I had a man of God at some point coming to me and he was crying. He said, the only discouragement that I have, everything else is going on very well and I'm preaching very well and I'm so excited and I'm very happy because I'm seeing the grace of God manifesting in very unusual ways. But what keeps on discouraging me is that my wife is either she's outside when I'm ministering or she's sleeping. She enjoys sleeping with the husband who's preaching. Mm. <laughs> Everyone else is jumping up and down. And there are other ladies in that church who cannot wait for him to finish. And they will write three page message. Mm just complimenting the man of, in point form. And in the middle of the night, that man is going through messages from members and he's wondering, what kind of a lady is this? And you never got a single word from the wife that you married. Why? You married another man's wife. Because the marriage was not according to the future. This is not where, well, I, I didn't want to touch on this one. I didn't want to touch on this one, but I just want to show. You have personal problems that you have. What are the people thinking when they look at you, look at your head and look at what the wife is doing? If she was sick on that day, then she's supposed to stay home. Why come? and become the message before thousands of people. Mm. <sighs> Are you not sleeping at home? Is it a disease? What kind of a message are you sending? To, you are destroying your husband's work. Are you the handcraft? Are you that mechanization that God has placed in his life that brings the supernatural into physical realities? Are you there to complicate or you are there to simplify? Mm. Mm. 
you must become the oil upon your husband. In case he's never going to be anointed, you must become that oil that lubricates his dealings. Everything might go wrong, but he can't wait to get home and get the comfort and get the encouragement from you. Why are you not trained in that area? Why is it that you don't know what to say? Only when something needs to be said. Why is it that you run out of vocabulary? You, you run out of words when something good is achieved. But if something goes wrong, you're the first person to notice. There is a problem with you. I'm saying, if you are not a man of God and you marry a wife of a man of God, you will eventually become a man of God. By the conversation and the conduct of the wife, after the word would have failed, the communication, how your wife presents herself before you, that can produce a ministry that was never given to you by God. Mm. Mm. Wow. Wow. So I've touched only one aspect here. Mm. The problem that most people are facing. Yeah. How are you going to solve that? Who is the closest person to you? who is undermining your interests. You don't feel encouraged. Who is that person? What is that thing? What is that portrait that serves as a discouragement? Every time you look at him, if it is your husband, you feel drained. It's because you did not marry according to the future. You have a present fixture mm. that will exhaust your soul every single moment, every investment that you are, put, you are putting it into your present because of problems, mm. quarreling, fighting, arguments. You have no time now to travel into the future and make future investments because all of your emotions, your anger, is needed in the present. Everything, you must concentrate on what is happening now. No time to travel. And that marriage is stopping you from extending into the future. You can't have decent experiences in the future because those experiences are molded by your current positioning. You have to dream from a happy home, mm. a happy environment. Mm. When you're excited in your present and then you dream from that joyful state. That's powerful, Papa. You are able to have joy and happiness in the future state, in a dream. You are, that's why I touched on the matrix. Be careful of what formulates your dream pattern. Mm. Where are you dreaming from? Yeah. If you're always fighting, always arguing, even in dreams, it's an argument. If you're in a state of confusion, even in those future dreams, you're dreaming of confusion. You are a product of your environment. Your dreams are produced by your immediate environment. So how do you doctor your dreams? How do you mold dreams, your future dreams, you can correct the nature, the texture of your future dreams by correcting your, your immediate state. Where you are dreaming from, if mm. you can correct that, you can correct the dream. Get rid of the confusion that you have in your current position and then you eliminate confusions in your future dream. A man who goes to bed confused 
will dream a confusing dream. A man who is not dreaming from love cannot experience love in the dream. Mm. 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 There is a place so glorious and in that place there are treasures. And I'm teaching you on how to move into that environment. Yes, Father. Money is not in the banks. It is in a glorious state. This is why I'm training you on this uh, supernatural journey, how to travel and extract from there. I don't want to start the subject today. I'll pick it up from here and then we can proceed. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, we are done for today. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Thank you so, so much, my father. This morning you've taught me that indeed when one, let me say, chooses a mentor especially when it comes to the spiritual you have to get a spiritual spiritual father <laughs> wow thank okay. you so so much okay. my father That's the best. <laughs> a spiritual spiritual father it's <laughs> true the spiritual father has to be spiritual, spiritual. has to be spiritual thank you so much my father wow the last part really hit me hard and I really appreciate you know, there are things that we take for granted in life. Mm. And really upgrading is something that needs to take care often. Mm. You know, when you talked about counseling, the general understanding is counseling, you need to be avoiding divorce. You need to be solving problems. Mm. And yet, there's another side of it, a positive side. You go there, upgrade. Upgrade. You look at the example that you gave Joseph and his wife. At some point, I wanted to ask my father, but anyways, for another time, that do you really believe in predestination? Anyway, we'll talk about that at some point. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, what's, what, what, what I found very intriguing was the fact that Joseph's marriage was futuristic. And the foundation that you gave us that whatever you do in the present, it has to be influenced by your future so that your past cannot pull you back. Mm -hmm. And whatever it is that you probably, let me call it a vision. Mm -hmm. Whatever vision that you might have about yourself in the future, it has to be determined by your current affairs today. Yes. So you need to model your environment so that you can be able to achieve the future. Yes. My father, I found that very, very profound. Wow. And these are the things of life, mm. things that pertaineth to life and its development that create a better tomorrow for everybody. Mm. And indeed, my father, this is life that you're giving us. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, father. I, I concur with Pastor Chikuni. <laughs> father, there's been this, there's, a, there's if I can call it a, a unity that you're bringing to our physical and the spiritual yes yes a divorce that had been done by wrong teachings that we had received before mm. where our present physical state mm. was divorced from our spiritual reality wow. and father you are showing us the importance of our physicality mm. in the outcome and experiences that we have in the spirit wow Wow. Father, you are not only just perfecting us from the inside, but you are adorning us in the outside, on the outside, reaching into the inside, working in the inside, wow. pulling it out. Wow. And Father, we appreciate this wow. marvelous work that you're doing in us. Just to add to what you've just said, Pastor Karam. Thank you, Father. Please allow me. There's something that my father, you explained that really caught my attention. I think that's probably one of the reasons why it made me to think that you'd really need a spiritual, spiritual father. Mm was the fact that due to probably previous teachings where we were forced or we subconsciously divorced the spirit man and the physical man. Mm -hmm. And you came and you highlighted that the ignition of the emotion does not really or is not really confined to a specific dimension that is either the physical or the supernatural. Mm -hmm. When you dream, the emotion that you ignite via that dream is the same, is the same 
with the emotion that you ignite in the physical. My father, that takes a spiritual father to explain that. A spiritual, <laughs> spiritual father to explain that. <laughs> ah. ah, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We, 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 we are still hanging from last week's Sunday. Mm. And uh, you've given us more mm. to, to, to build on. But as you said, Father, uh, we, we need, Father, we, we, we ask and we pray that we have more of this even during the week mm. um, yes yes uh, we thank you for the question and answer that we had earlier this week mm. and uh, we ask father if we can get opportunities um, where during these even question and answers <laughs> where we can postpone a question and answer and, and just and get into bit of this <laughs> yes, <father>. yes yes <laughs> and uh, ex explain this a bit more father wow we thank you so much father for we have to look into that thank you father for this wonderful yeah. day Wow, we've been blessed and uh, immensely touched and changed by this word. Until we meet again soon, we shall.